Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today it's March 21st, 2022. We saw a pretty significant bounce last week, several accumulation day. They see no major indices. Uh, it appears the Fed's decision to increase interest rates by only 25 basis points was considered somewhat conservative. Um, and therefore, basically everything bounced. The worst hit groups were the biggest gainers, uh, China, Europe, and cloud stocks, definitely among the, among the biggest gainers. So if this is just a bear market rally, we should see those groups uh, reverse lower first. As of right now, we're not really seeing any significant signs of uh, selling pressure. The buyers are still in charge. I don't know how long is that going to continue. So while um, tech stocks are kind of consolidating after their big move in the past uh, week, um, commodities, which last week pulled back, are now back and now rallying again. Here's the, uh, the metals and mining ETF making new uh, multi-year highs. So this is about what, like about new 10-year high. So all metal na names, not just gold and silver, but are looking constructively. Uh, steel, copper, aluminum, they're either setting up or just breaking out. Um, oil, obviously, um, super strong as well. Big bounce after a pullback to its rising 50-day um, moving average. And most oil stocks are looking the same. This is why typically when I trade oil, I just trade uh, some of the ETFs like ERX, which is a two times long energy ETF or GUSH or UCO. I mean, they're super highly correlated. So there's really no reason to uh, look for individual uh, plays there. And if oil remains strong, I'm keeping a close eye on solar stock as well, even though they look horrible still below their 200-day uh, moving average, most of them. But look at this tightening price action. So this is constructive to me. I mean, here it made higher lows, and now it's uh, tightening and setting up for a potential uh, breakout and test of 80. Um, this is TAN, and the, the solar, one of the solar ETFs. There are quite a few of them. And um, PBW is another one. Uh, some of the individual names I will be paying attention to are Nova, uh, ENPH, for solar. Uh, if crude oil continues higher, these are likely to kind of catch up. Obviously, this is like a secondary play. Um, just like um, something like uh, railways are a secondary plays to uh, the increase in oil price and to the increase uh, in the price of all commodities. So all the railway stocks are also acting constructively. Look at this one, UNP kind of setting up uh, for continuation higher. It's a slow mover though. So it's not for everyone. So what, what else? Um, so yeah, all commodities, especially um, the agricultural commodities continue to be on fire. The pullbacks to the rising 20, uh, 50 day moving average uh, are getting bought. And today was another strong day for all um, fertilizer related names. MOS, this is new uh, multi year highs. And just to uh, show you what's possible in those names, here's a monthly chart going back all the way to 90, 1995. As you can see here in the, in the mid 2000s when we had another um, period of uh, rising interest rates and um, relatively high inflation, Mosaic you know, went from 16 to 160 in, in less than a couple of years. So um, anything is possible once those stocks become momentum stocks and they're already, they're already momentum stocks. And back in the time, we didn't even have uh, um, Russia and Belarus 
market close for the rest of the world, for most of the world, uh, as they account for 30% of the world potash uh, production. So definitely there are a lot of uh, key elements here at play um, that are impacting the price action in mosaic. And at this point, also the price momentum itself, it's, uh, it's also an important factor so as uh, speculators are just pushing the envelope and might just uh, send prices even higher. <clears throat> so yeah, all the big plays in the sector like Mosaic, CF Industries, NTR, IPI are among the price leaders. And if this sixth sector remains hot, we might see some of the smaller junkier names in the sector also um, bouncing. Just like we saw IMOS, oh, oh, what was the name of that the tiny uh, uh, tiny oil names that went up? Doesn't matter. So we so we we might see definitely some uh, hot action in the junky um, agricultural input stocks if that trend remains hot. So something like YT and RD. Uh, KD, C, the Chinese one. So, you know, if if you're you know looking to speculate more on those, you you, you can keep an eye on some of those smaller names in the sector. Um, other than that, um, I still remain with the view that this is a bear market rally, but. As of right now, I really don't see a reason to short yet because I don't really see any significant selling. Uh, first, we need to see um, at least a move below the previous day's low uh, in the major indices or at least in the stocks that you want to short. As of right now, we don't really see any, uh, any signs that the deep buying is uh, slowing down. So. Um, I'm just taking quick, uh, quick trades and uh, make sure to take uh, uh, quick profits. Like last week, uh, I took AMD here in, in anticipation of a breakout. I bought some March 25th, uh, 114 calls, which are kind of closed this morning. As expected, you know, this test of its 50-day uh, moving average. Um, what else today? I bought AYC as a metal play, as it's setting up on multiple time frames. Here, as you can see, it's trying to break out, setting up for a potential test of its uh, all-time highs here near 40. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure when I take those plays just to take partial profits intraday when the, the trade goes in, in, uh, in my favor. And um, until I see the major indices setting up and going above their uh, 20, 50, 200 day moving average. Uh, and specific for the S&P 500, I would like to see it going back about 4, 460. Uh, I continue to uh, be cautious and uh, just uh, take profits quickly when I have them. <clears throat> so that's all for me for now. Um, see you next week and hopefully with Howard.